There are new signs this morning that the Israeli Defense Force could move into Gaza at any minute. CNN has seen a buildup of military right along the border and now flares late into the night. This comes as Israeli government officials tell CNN's Nick Robertson that the troops have the, quote, green light to enter Gaza. Now, those officials also say that Gaza's 50-mile border with Israel will look radically different after any military incursion. They tell CNN that a tough buffer zone will be established, one that would essentially be a no-go zone, and the IDF will be able to go into Gaza and arrest people whenever they want, at least theoretically, on their terms, much like they can now in the West Bank. Joining us now at the Magic Wall, CNN military analyst, retired Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling. Sir, good to see you. Uh, I, want, I want to start with the flares, because Nick Robertson was pointing this out. We we'll show video of it right now. Um, and he made clear that that's not the norm necessarily in this moment. What does that tell you? It just tells me that the Israeli forces are, are looking for something or they're trying to use a little bit of psychological warfare against the people inside of uh, Gaza. It, this is not that big of a deal. Uh, it is just to show potentially the commanders that are on the scene where different crossing points are, what they're looking for. It's to orient those who are new to the area. The big question is, will this become a regional conflict? The president talked about that last night. Let's talk about what we have just seen in the region. The fact that two sources told CNN overnight that Navy warships, U.S. Navy warships operating in the Middle East, uh, had to counter multiple projectiles fired uh, on the coast of Yemen yesterday. And then you couple that with what the Pentagon says are drone attack attempts in Iraq and where U.S. officials are in Iraq and and uh, and Syria. Yeah, a couple things that happened yesterday. The the drone attack out uh, off the coast of the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden down here against the USS Kearney drew a lot of attention. Integrated air defense from that ship shot the drones and the missiles down that were coming out of Yemen. That's important, but the range from there to Israel is pretty far, and it's. They don't have a great missile force, let's put it that way. But the other things that were occurring are, would be a normal day in some, in some countries, like the drone attack at al Tamth in, in Syria. That is a U.S. military base in that particular reason. It's been there for a while. Other drone attacks, Al-Assad Air Force Base, I've been out there many times uh, in Iraq, uh, Erbil, Baghdad, and in the southern part of Iraq, just tells me that the popular mobilization fronts, the Iranian-backed rebels are actually targeting those kinds of locations just as harassment attacks. There was also two Israeli citizens uh, killed in Egypt, mm -hmm. which just shows that there's an, a swell of a ground movement that is a result of some of the things that have been going on there. And, and all of these Arab street does not want Israel to go into Gaza. Let me just take a step back to, to what your point has been. Uh, and I think it's very valuable to note that these bases, these U.S. bases, are often harassed, are mm -hmm. often subject to drone attacks uh, or rocket attacks. All of it happening on the oh, same day, God. the same day the president gives an Oval Office address uh, as Israel is uh, preparing for what looks like a ground incursion. Different proxies yep. from Iran, yep. but does that tell you something? Yeah, it's a, call for, it's a call for harassment. It's a call for attacks. It is a jihad. Uh, they are receiving information from Iran saying... Let's up the ante a little bit and show our displeasure at what's going on in Israel. Moments ago, a large group of people were seen rallying for the opening of the Rafah crossing on the Egypt border. Uh, you can see this. This is right outside that border. It's a few miles around that crossing. There's craters in front of it. We understand about 20 trucks. Some of those drivers have told us they actually saw the Egyptian moving concrete as if there was an may, maybe the possibility of an opening. But subsequently, CNN has learned that the Rafa crossing will not open today, uh, as had been anticipated. But that sense of on the ground uh, and that, that terrain, that desert, Gives you some perspective on where we stand right now. Just moments ago, we did hear from the UN Secretary General, Antonio Gutierrez, who is at the Rafa border crossing on the Egyptian side. So he is there. You've got a UN compound on the other side where, where we know people are better supplied than most places, but still with dwindling, dwindling supplies. Uh, and of course, he's standing where all those trucks loaded with aid are waiting to enter. Behind these walls, we have two million people that is suffering enormously. So these trucks are not just trucks. They are a lifeline. They are the difference between life and death for so many people in Gaza. What we need is to make them move, to make them move to the other side of this wall, to make them move as quickly as possible 
So those cement blocks that I referenced, we actually have video of that. CNN has obtained that from some of these truck drivers who are sitting there uh, night upon night and waiting, moving those blocks at the entrance of the crossing. There are those 20 trucks. They are expected to enter once the crossing opens. The United Nations is saying that it needs, though, 100 trucks a day to provide adequate aid to the people inside Gaza. 20 trucks right now, and they need 100 a day. This comes as Gaza's main medical facility is in danger of running out of fuel within hours. No fuel has been coming into Gaza now for days. And of course, to run a generator, you need fuel. All of that is now running out. Doctors Without Borders said yesterday that the Al Shifa hospital in Gaza City only had enough fuel to run its generators for 24 more hours. That hospital is one of the few places in Gaza that actually even has electricity for now. And, and on that front, you know, we have been getting dispatches from people inside Gaza uh, daily. And, you know, they, we get these small clips and they cut out because of the phone connections, because they don't have the power. Our journalist Ibrahim Daman escaped northern Gaza in the south with his wife and two sons. He's been filing these dispatches for out front every night. And here's his latest report on the situation in Khan Yunus. الوضع عندنا في خان يونس من ساعة ما نزحنا من الفندق إلى خان يونس وإحنا موجودين في نفس البيت في البداية كان البيت في البداية آمن لكن الآن من أمس وأول أمس ازدادت الضربة الجوية في منطقة خان يونس والقصف المدفعي الحياة في خان يونس صعبة جدا إحنا المية الحمامات المية بصعوبة لما بنجيبها بصعوبة جدا فيش مية في الشو فيش مية شرب صارت غارة جوية كتير 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 قوية عنا الدنيا تملت غبرة بيضة بيضة صارت المنطقة The world is turning into a white cloud. Something poetic and, and profound about that, that horrible image. Joining us now is Avril Benoit, the U.S. Executive Director for Doctors Without Borders. And Avril, I appreciate speaking with you again. I know that you have a team in this main hospital in Gaza, the Al-Shifa Hospital. Can you give us any update on their situation? Yes, Erin, uh, we are really beside ourselves because we often lose contact with them. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, with the lack of electricity, the inability to charge phones, cell signals often uh, being cut out. Uh, very difficult to get real-time information from the team. And uh, what we do know is that our medical coordinator was warning that the fuel was reading, reaching catastrophic lows. And of course, they will ration. They will try to stretch it out as much as possible because you need that fuel to run generators for the life-saving medical equipment, <coughs> including incubators for neonates, uh, dialysis machines, and just, uh, just general functioning for all the trauma surgeries that they're trying to do.